Knowing your audience is a fundamental rule of effective communication. And there are lots of ways to approach this challenge of connecting with your audience. But when it comes to narrative structure, there are actually two main audiences, your inner circle and your outer circle. Therefore, you need to know who they are. Let's start with the inner circle. That's your people who know you, your friends, your family, your close colleagues. They, they just know who you are and want to hear what you have to say. And then there are the people that may not know you, but know that they want to know something about what you have to communicate. So for this inner circle, you don't have to worry so much about narrative structure. You can string together your ideas or facts with ands, and this, and that, and this. And it doesn't really make too much difference because they either want to listen to you or they want to listen to what you have to say. And we are all familiar with this. It's the idea of preaching to the converted or preaching to the choir. The problem is that the AAA structure and, and, and will not work for your outer circle. So who is your outer circle? Basically, it's everyone else. And for that, there's narrative. And for narrative, there's ABT, and, but, and therefore. So just how big is your outer circle? Well, it's perhaps not the entire planet as this image would seem to suggest, but it's a lot bigger than you might expect. And its size depends on the setting. Here, for example, is a graph that we're all too familiar with, the number of daily cases for the last year of the pandemic. And the thing about this is that in the beginning, it's probably the case that not many people really cared about the pandemic or the coronavirus when it was something was happening on the other side of the planet. But when it arrived in the United States and the number of cases started building, and particularly at the end of last year and the beginning of this year when there were so many cases, that, that inner circle, the people that you could just uh, reach directly by giving them public health messages, was really, really big. And that's because people were scared. They wanted to know how to protect themselves. So you didn't have to worry about, about the narrative so much when everyone was glued to their uh, television set trying to figure out what to do about the pandemic. But it's springtime now. The number of cases have, has gone down and that outer circle is getting bigger again, which means we have to do a better job at using narrative to convey public health messages to keep people safe. Now, since this is a narrative blitz, I'd like to end with my own personal narrative. And that's how I engage the outer circle in my work about coral symbiosis. Now, some of you may know corals have a relationship with little tiny algae in their cells, which photosynthesize and feed them. Now, before mass bleaching occurred, there were only a few people that were really interested in coral symbiosis. And that was that little blue circle, the scientists who worked on the symbiosis itself. But after coral bleaching started happening in a big way around the world, that circle of people interested in the symbiosis got much bigger. And that's because mass bleaching is a breakdown in coral symbiosis. So they had to know how coral symbiosis worked. But it's still a blue circle of scientists. There's the whole red circle, the outer circle of the people who still aren't really that interested. And it's actually pretty big as I came to realize uh, after I had a conversation with a television reporter in San Diego. I was working at the time at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and she called me up and said, I hear there's a lot of coral bleaching going on around the world. I'd really like to do a story about that. I said, great. So she said, so tell me, how are the coral reefs in San Diego doing? And I paused and said, well, actually, there aren't any coral reefs in San Diego. And she sadly said that she didn't think she could do this story as a consequence and hung up. But a half an hour later, she called me back. She said, well, what about the coral reef fish in the supermarkets in San Diego? Can we talk about that? But once again, I had to tell her that sadly, no, there weren't that many coral reef fish in supermarkets in San Diego either. And so once again, she thanked me for her time and said she was sorry she couldn't do the story. She couldn't do the story because of course, it wasn't gonna be interesting to the outer circle. But she was really determined to tell the story. And so she called me back a third time and she said, what about drugs from coral reefs? Can coral reefs save people's lives? And I said, yes, let's go for it. So she came over, we did the interview. It was aired on the evening news that night. And it was great. I even managed to get in the message that we have just one planet and we've got to share it. 
It's an important message then and an important message now. But the only reason I was able to deliver that message was because she worked so hard at getting me to be able to reach the outer circle.